Hi guys, um, so I'm going to make a series of videos to uh, give some understanding to people that haven't got a lot of experience with cameras and CCTV systems for your home. So the idea of today's video is just to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the different items that are used um, and at the end of the series of videos that I'd like to do, you guys should be confident enough and have an understanding enough to be able to install your own system in your home. So I've got a few products here on the table today and a few tools and I'm just going to give you a bit of an introduction to those. Okay, so first of all with CCTV systems there's basically two types of cameras. We have the older and slowly getting phased out analog cameras and we have the newer IP cameras which have actually been around for quite a number of years but cost-wise has kept them uh, certainly for home users, uh, not really an option, but these days IP cameras are quite cheap, uh, much better quality than analog cameras, and analog cameras um, really are getting phased out these days. So I've got an analog camera here and the associated cables that are used with those. Uh, I'll show you those just quickly now, but we're not going to talk too much about the analog cameras. So this, this is an analog camera, and you can see here that if we take the top off, we have, we have a lens which has different axis of adjustment through the lens here. This is a three axis adjustment. And the connections for these are called BNC. So they are the letters B, N and C. BNC connectors, that's the type of connector you use. And it also needs a separate power supply for the camera. Um, this is anywhere from 12 to 24 volts. I think 24 volts AC or 12 volt DC, depending on the power supply you have. Now the cables for these are coaxial cables. This is called an RG59 coaxial cable. It has a black outer sheath here. And then once you strip the sheath off, you have a copper braid inside. And that copper braid surrounds the nylon insulator. And it's designed to take away any interference, any electrical interference that may uh, come within the cabling if it's too close to power cables and so on. Um, inside, the, inside the nylon insulator we have a solid copper conductor and this centre core solid copper conductor is what carries the video signal. Uh, so there's a method of you know, making up your own connections and putting them on. You can buy pre-connected cables uh, with kits because you can still buy the the kits where you get a digital video recorder, you get, um, you get um, a number of cameras, analog cameras, and also you get the cables. So this would be a typical cable for the power supply. It's called a figure eight cable. It's just, um, it's just two cables laying side by side. If you cut the cable and look at it end on, you may not be able to see that there, but it's in the shape of a figure eight. That's why it's called figure eight. So, that's all I'll talk about with the analog cameras. They are still available, they are quite cheap, and you can get pretty good quality out of these cameras. But for the purposes of, um, of my series of videos, we'll talk purely about the IP cameras. Uh, just briefly, if we, look, if we look over here at the back of um, a typical digital video recorder, we have these connectors here. Now these are all the analog inputs for the digital video recorder. So this particular recorder can take analog cameras and also can take IP cameras or a combination of both. It's an eight channel. You can see two, four, six, eight terminations. So for instance, if you used four of the analog connectors, you could then have four IP cameras. If you used all eight analog cameras, then you wouldn't be able to use any IP cameras. You could use six analog and two IP. The IP cameras connect differently, and that's what we'll talk about in a moment. <clears throat> okay, so what we've got here is an IP camera. IP stands for Internet Protocol. So these basically work over network cables. I'll just grab my tool and take the lid off this to show you inside. Now this particular screwdriver is a security screwdriver. Generally when you buy the cameras they come with the special tool that allows you because these have got a security screw in there and you can't undo that with a normal screwdriver. 
it just prevents people outside your house um, you know tampering with your your cameras taking the covers off and, and damaging them and so on so we take that lid off there one more okay so once we take that off we have a little shield here that pops off now this little shield is important because it stops any sunlight or any light coming in and ruining your image now this camera here is similar to the analog camera in that it rotates through this way it also rotates up and down and you can also rotate the horizontal plane that's called a three axis camera now when the camera is installed on a wall it's very important to have the three axis so that you can actually set the camera up to get the correct orientation now this camera here doesn't use coaxial cable this particular camera here uses what's called a cat5 data cable and it just connects into here this is where you would connect a power supply if you had a separate power supply if the camera was a long way away from the digital video recorder this is probably what you would use for power supply using it locally close to the camera uh, however with these connections we have a device called a PoE switch and a PoE stands for power over Ethernet now Ethernet this is called an Ethernet cable or a data cable it's also called cat5 or cat6 uh, cat5 is, is adequate for a home use and this particular cable is very easy to work with very easy to use this one I'm holding I think is a 10 meter patch lead or a 15 meter patch lead and it has the connectors on the end. Now these connectors are called RJ45 connectors. The RJ45 connector is a very standard connector in the data industry. And this is what is used to connect to the camera. So if we take, if we take this RJ45 connector, plug it into the camera like so, it locks on, it has a little tab that locks it in, it won't come out. And what this cable does, this cable brings power into the camera, so that's the power over Ethernet, this being an Ethernet cable. Power over Ethernet, power goes into the camera, and it also takes the video signal from the camera and takes it back to the digital video recorder. Now, with this particular, there are, there are many types of different digital video recorders that you can have. And this particular digital video recorder because it has the analog inputs if you have analog cameras it has down here what's called a camera port and the camera port is also a network port that's for another discussion well basically it puts this digital video recorder on your home network if you plug that into your router and that's how you can access it via a mobile phone to view your cameras and control your digital video recorder however the camera's port is where you would plug in this device which is called the PoE switch now this is a 10 port PoE switch because we have 8 RJ45 ports so we can plug in 8 cameras and we have 2 fibre optic ports these fibre optic ports in a home situation wouldn't be used so basically what you could do is you could have seven cameras connected here and the last port you would run a cable down into the cameras port on the digital video recorder so what happens is this PoE switch when you plug your camera into here this sends power to the camera this receives the video from the camera from the IP camera and all seven cameras that connect here the video signals would go out of this last port down to the digital video recorder and they would record as individual channels so you would have seven IP cameras here um, so again with this one if you had seven IP cameras connected because it's an eight channel digital video recorder you could have one analog camera if you wanted um, we've also got down on this video recorder and most video recorders have what's called a video output this connector here, this video output, which is an analog output, 
you can run a cable from here and you can run it to a separate monitor and you can program through the digital video recorder software which of the cameras are going to show up on that monitor. So for instance, you could have a small monitor located in your kitchen or your lounge room on the wall and you could have a camera at your front door. If someone rings the doorbell, you can just look at your monitor to see who is actually there. Um, and that's what, this, that's what this video output channel is all about. So, just briefly again with our Cat5 cable, it comes in different colours. Now, you probably can buy, well you certainly can buy kits. You can buy a digital video recorder, which is purely for IP cameras. And the digital video recorder itself would not require a PoE switch. So your typical home kits would be a digital video recorder, and you can get them in a 4 channel, an 8 channel, and a 16 channel. And they have the RJ45 ports, like on the PoE switch, they have them directly built in to the digital video recorder. Generally, they wouldn't accept an analog camera, only they will, they will only accept the IP cameras. And so therefore you can plug the IP cameras directly into the digital video recorder. And it acts as a PoE switch as well. So the digital video recorder would be sending power out the ethernet cable to the IP camera, receiving the video signals directly to it. So that negates the need for a PoE switch, which saves on cost. Um, and in that case, when you have your digital video recorder, it needs to be located, generally it needs to be located somewhere near your internet router. So the network port plugs into your home internet router and that allows you then from remote locations to be able to view it with your camera. Uh, now you can, when you get these kits, they often give you these data cables prefabricated with the patch leads on them. But if you've got a camera that's quite a way away, you might have some cameras that are three meters, five meters away from your digital video recorder. You may have some way up the other end of the house that might be 30 or 40 meters away from the digital video recorder. You can buy a box of this cable for a reasonably cheap price and you can make up your own leads. As part of another video that I'll be doing, I'll be showing you how to actually terminate these and you can um, use some of these tools which I'll show you in a moment, which you can also purchase fairly cheaply. Um, if you come in close here and have a look at this, this is again, this is your typical cable with the prefabricated um, RJ45 connector on it. But if you look at, and here are some shorter ones, some patch leads here. So this short patch lead here would be a typical one whereby you would plug it into your digital video recorder down here and then you would plug that into your PoE switch, like that. Okay, so in the case where you have cameras that are different lengths away from your digital video recorder, you can buy the box, as I said, you can buy the box of this cable for a reasonable price, and you can buy some of these connectors here, I'll show you. And again, these are only cheap. Now that's, that is a typical RJ45 connector. And this has eight pins, eight pins in there, because this cable has four pairs. Now the four pairs obviously gives you eight cables. So if we separate those like that, there we can see we have a green pair, which generally carries video. We have an orange pair, we have a blue pair, right here, a blue pair and a brown pair. The brown pair always carries the power. So, as I said in another video, I will show you how to terminate this onto this cable. And in that case, you can make up your own cables. So you can run the cable up the wall, through the roof, and again, that will be another video that I'll show you how to run the cables. And you can run them there, and once you get the camera hanging out where the ca camera will, the cable, sorry, where the camera will be, and at the other end, you'll have the cable coming down the wall, generally out of a wall outlet, about the size of a GPO or a PowerPoint. You can then terminate all of those cables with your RJ45 plugs 
on the end of them, then you can plug your camera in and you can plug the other end down into your digital video recorder or your PoE switch, depending on what unit you have. And that's gonna save you um, wasting cable and you can also run as many of these and you may be, may be able to run some extra cables while you're pulling the ones you want for your, say you've got a four camera installation, you may think that in the future you might wanna put another camera uh, so you can pull a couple of extra cables and leave them sitting in the roof ready for that. You can terminate those and then when the day comes you want to install them, you've already got your cables there, you've already done the work. So just to show you a couple of the tools, which again on another video I'll show you how to use to terminate those, but if you just like to have a look at these, you can see how I've taken the, I've taken the white outer sheath off this cable and that's a little stripping tool like this little yellow one here. Very simple little tool, very cheap. They're probably only five or six dollars to buy one of these. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this will help you um, strip the cable off. You can also strip the cable off with this crimping tool. But once you've stripped the cable off, you need to put strip the outer shield off. You need to take these colors and you need to lay them down so that they're like my fingers. So they're all laid down flat like that and you need to have them in certain color code and then you trim them off, you put them in the plug, you insert the plug into this device here and once you've inserted the RJ45 jack into here you crimp it down and then let it go and what that does is squashes the pins onto the plug and squashes the pins down onto the cables and makes an electrical connection. The other tools you may need to have in your little kit are just a basic Stanley knife, a pair of side cutters, the security tool which will come with the camera when you purchase it, and also this particular tool which I like. Um, you can buy different types of these, it looks like a toenail cutter almost, and what these, what these tools do is they cut this cable off nice and clean and keeps the end of it nice and round, whereas if you were to cut this off with side cutters it tends to squash it and flatten it whereas this one cuts it nice and round so again we'll go over on another video how to use the tools how to terminate the cables another video will be how to run the cables and actually install your cameras um, and there'll be another video to show you how to terminate everything connect everything and bring the whole system together uh, and I think by then you guys should be pretty comfortable to go and buy one of these kits I think typically you can buy you can buy a digital video recorder. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a four channel, although you may only want four cameras. If you want another camera in the future and you've only got a four channel digital video recorder, you have no room for expansion. If you buy an eight channel one, which is not a lot more expensive, you can still install your four cameras now and add extra cameras later on as you wish to, up to a maximum. So guys, I would definitely recommend getting an eight channel digital video recorder for that room for expansion, even if you are putting the four cameras. Uh, you can pick up an 8-channel video recorder, you can pick up your four cameras uh, as a kit form, in a kit form, you can get a box of cable, you can get some connectors and the basic tools you'll need. And at the end of my videos, you'll know how to use all of that and put it together. You can get those kits and everything for well under $1,000, including the cable and the tools, and you should be set up to install your own system. Just one more word, we're not limited to this style of camera. This camera is called a dome camera. Um, it's, it's typically used uh, outside under the eaves, uh, externally. This particular camera also has the, the LEDs. It's got these little lights on here, which we'll talk about next time, but they create um, a nighttime video. It's black and white, the image, once the daylight drops down and these infrared lights come on, but it's, it's a very good black and white image. So it can be so dark, you can't even see your hand, and yet these cameras will still see a very very good black and white image. So this particular dome camera is designed to go out up under your eaves. You can also get bullet cameras which look like a little bullet, like a turret, um, and they're, they're very good and very handy cameras outside as well. Totally waterproof generally. Uh, there's, a, there's a few different types of cameras you can get. You can also get PTZ cameras or pan tilt zoom cameras. Pan tilt zoom cameras from your software on your computer you can zoom them in and out turn them left and right, up and down as well, so that's the panning is left and right, the tilting is up and down and the zooming. PTZ, pan tilt zoom cameras. 
a lot more expensive, but they can be a very, very handy camera. You can move them and zoom them in and put them on a certain place where you might be concerned. Uh, say, for instance, watching a car parked in your driveway or out in the front of your street. So instead of having multiple cameras, you can have a pan tilt zoom camera that watches those. They can also be programmed to follow motion. If someone comes into their field of view and they're walking across, these cameras will pick that up and will follow that person. And so they're very, very good like that. And that's all done in the background automatically in recording. So thanks for watching, guys. That's the end of this video. Any questions, feel free to, uh, to ask me and I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. And I'll get myself set up for the next video and get that out there shortly. Okay, see you next time.